is dedicated uh, to uh, the issue of knowledge management, uh, knowledge management and communication framework. And as you might have heard, this uh, session is recorded as well. You can find uh, these recordings later on the website. Just briefly, uh, for those who might be new here, LEAP for FNSSA, this stands for Long-Term European African Partnership for Food and Nutrition Security and Sustainable Agriculture. LEAP for FNSSA is an EU-funded uh, project, and we are aiming at uh, designing an AU-EU platform for research and innovation on food and nutrition security and sustainable um, agriculture. So um, a warm welcome to you. I realize here that my slides are not moving, but now they move. Please get a tea or coffee and let's move on. Um, we, uh, this is a, a group in LEAP for FNSSA, Actors, Alliances and Policies and colleagues who are organizing this meeting here, but uh, also together uh, with other groups in the project who will contribute here. So it is a LEAP for FNSSA event this morning. I hope that you have a, a good coffee and tea now and we can move on. Um, my name is Stefan Hafner. I am from the German Aerospace Center. I'm serving uh, the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research together with uh, Jackie Cardo, my dear colleague uh, from Kenya, from the Network of African Science Academies, will facilitate uh, this fourth good morning and I hand over to you, Jackie, please. And I cannot hear Jackie, so perhaps there is an issue with the internet, then um, I will move on. But Jackie, if you can hear me, uh, come in once you are connected. Colleagues, um, become a part of it. Um, this is uh, indeed the song that we are singing since the last uh, three mornings, become a part of the process uh, to develop the AUEU platform for research and innovation on FNSSA. Uh, we have to develop this platform together. Therefore, your input counts. And um, we try to ensure that we develop this together uh, along different methods uh, and, and processes. What you can do first is indeed to share your expression of interest to join the platform you see here. Um, an, an internet address where you can do this, but the colleagues uh, from Siambari and Italy, uh, they should be mentioned again and again because they are our heroes in the background. They take care for the registration, for uh, organizing here uh, the Zoom rooms and also upload uh, from time to time in the chat uh, the links that are relevant for you. So now please uh, may I ask you to upload this link here. I don't have the chat on, so I cannot see whether it's done already. Um, dear uh, distinguished guests, please um, uh, enter this uh, website and share your expression of interest to become a part of this process. What are we else doing today here is, uh, like in the mornings um, before, we use a feedback tool, uh, the so-called Mentimeter. Uh, for those who are following us uh, with their smartphones, you can uh, use here the QR code um, uh, to uh, enter the Mentimeter. But also um, with that regard, the team from Siambari makes it very comfortable for us by uploading from time to time in the chat the link to the Mentimeter, then you do not need any code or so, just click on this link and then you are in the Mentimeter and we have different questions that uh, we want to share with you and we are keen um, to see your uh, responses to that. Um, we uh, want to have a quick round of introduction with you in the chat uh, so that we can go on, but that you are also visible here who is there, please type in the chat your name, the sector you are from, like for example, private sector, are you a farmer or from the agribusiness? Uh, are you from an NGO? Are you a funder or policy maker, scientist or decision maker? You can write this in the chat, please, the name, the sector, the institution you are from and the country. And please feel free also to share uh, your email address uh, if you want to make contact with some um, of the colleagues here in the meeting. 
let us um, be reminded a bit, what are we working on? We are working in the AUEU region, which is a big region of 82 countries with 1.5 billion people. From model, what does that mean? We designed um, based on uh, the first draft of the model uh, designed in Leap Agri, a program and innovation management cycle meta governance model, as well as a long-term platform process, uh, which is a succession of these uh, program and innovation management cycles. So far, the theory, that is the model from which we are coming from. To practice, what does that mean? We established already a West Africa EU alliance and a North Africa EU alliance in which we are working on different documents to prepare the ground for a coming program cycle, but also for the long-term platforms, infrastructure, methods, processes uh, that we want to conduct in the frame of this platform. So uh, what is the overall goal? And I come a bit to these uh, details um, with uh, the overall goal, because the overall goal is the AUEU platform on FNSSA the West Africa EU Alliance and the North Africa EU Alliance are just pilots towards this final goal to have this AU EU platform. And there from model to practice, this means we are coming from the meta governance model and the platform process that we developed so far. And um, we are now writing on a theory of change and impact pathway for the AU EU region. TCIP stands for Theory of Change and Impact Pathway, including a monitoring and evaluation and learning concept. Furthermore, we are working on a communication concept, which includes, for example, a typology of stakeholder dialogues. Who has to talk in an improved way in the future so that we can benefit more from research output and the dialogues that have to happen with the end users of knowledge so that also science is fed by um, the end users of knowledge with their questions uh, to be raised then by and, and, and to be worked on by the scientists. <clears throat> We are also working on the question how to manage, how to coordinate um, this big diversity of actors. The suggestion so far is to establish uh, a polycentric cluster coordination, which means clustering plays a role. And today we hear uh, a lot about clustering, in particular project clustering. Um, a cluster network uh, would be um, necessary to ensure that uh, the different actors are interlinked. And for that, we uh, drafted a cluster mechanism, uh, which roughly describes how those clusters uh, should or could interact in the future. Um, and this uh, could be done by a coordination hub, which could become the organizational um, uh, um, element of the future platform, including 15 services uh, that are required in the program cycle. Uh, we are developing, we are establishing uh, a funders consortium. We will have a meeting on, on the fifth good morning of our forum uh, only for funders. And uh, we are working on, on knowledge management and communication framework for the platform's process and this is the focus of the day of uh, the day today uh, the knowledge management and communication framework just briefly um, who are the speakers and the facilitators today this is benjamin abugri from fara uh, irene anna frempong from fara the coordinator of leap for evan ssa also petronella chaminuka from arc uh, from south africa Johannes Dimitriou from SLU Sweden and um, Jackie and me, we introduced uh, 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 us already. We will start today with um, a session on the project database and KEOPS, an instrument that has been developed uh, in the Leap for FNSSA project, the knowledge management system tool, and uh, a second session um, uh, as, a, as a kind of clustering exercise will be facilitated by Petronella and Johannes. This will be followed then 
by um, a kickoff session from Benjamin for the FARA D Group's collaborative tool for development through dialogue. Uh, this is one meeting point, one entry point uh, to the platform um, from today on. And at the end, we will have a session with uh, Irene from FARA about the platform that we want, about communication, coordination, and uh, infrastructure that is needed for the platform. Having this said and introduced you to today's good morning, uh, again, I hope you used the last 10 minutes to get a good cup of coffee and a tea. I'm handing over now to Petronella and Ioannis and please share your slides and um, go ahead with us. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. I will now try to share my screen and I hope Petronella you are alert if something happens to my computer to take over, but let's see if that will work. I hope you can see the whole screen now. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Let me know. Is there something happening in front it's of you? It's not in presentation mode. No? OK. Then this is not good. So Petronella, may I ask you to share the screen instead of me? Because okay, I hope it will work. Um, otherwise, we have our nice support there, so. Okay. Um, is it in presentation mode now? Yes, it is. Thank you very much. So, um, I would like to start uh, by introducing ourselves, uh, Petronella Shaminuka from ARC South Africa and myself will uh, run this presentation and also direct you to the Mentimeter questions that will uh, come later on after our introduction. Um, next slide, please. And we will talk of about the presentation of the KMS tool, the FNSC project database and the KOPS. Next slide. Okay, so I'm pressing it on my side and it doesn't move. <laughs> it might work if you use uh, the, the scrolling wheel on your mouse. There is an issue with Zoom and PowerPoint, I realized. Perhaps this can work. Yes, it worked. Somehow it worked. So thank you very much, Petronella. Today we will talk about the knowledge management system and uh, first of all we will uh, say a few words about why, why do we need a, a knowledge management system of all the information uh, for the FNSSA and also uh, give you some idea of the practical issues, some practical tools that we have developed in the project and we are looking forward to develop even more uh, when uh, the FNSSA platform will be established. So producing information, knowledge and communicating is a very central part of the uh, leap for FNSSA project. But as we see it of the platform as such, uh, our coordinator will probably later on uh, develop a bit more the central position of the producing uh, information, knowledge and how to use it. Uh, next slides. Yes, and next slide. Yes, so central position on one hand, but very many challenges on the other hand. Um, there is uh, a lot of uh, issues that uh, really makes this work uh, very important. Uh, because uh, there are some challenges for collaboration, as you all know, there are a lot of people out there, a lot of activities and uh, a lot of different interests. So some of the challenges that we face for collaboration is the fragmentation of projects, the silo problem, sometimes the duplication and sometimes the gaps in knowledge. And uh, all these aspects are uh, let's say, thought to be tackled by the work with the knowledge management system. 
to make it a bit more dramatic to, dramatic as well. Uh, in some cases, it feels that no one knows uh, who is doing what and where. And the where is also quite important. Uh, looking at the map that Stefan was uh, presenting, two big areas, Europe and Africa, uh, it is almost impossible to know by heart, let's say, who is doing what and where. So a knowledge management system will help to that direction as well. To make it even more complicated, there's a lot of data and knowledge out there. In most cases, it is not systematically managed. And so the tools for managing data and knowledge are uh, so far limited or at least not very well, uh, let's say, used in the FNSSA domain. And in some cases, we can also see that some best practices of uh, really successful pro projects are not shared uh, or are not reaching, let's say, the greater public. So there are some uh, limitations there. And to finish with the challenges, there is some inefficiency in resource use and targeting of interventions. And um, I can talk and develop a bit more on, on the resource use and the interventions. Uh, it is not only inefficiency in, uh, in the way to find the information, but also in the prioritization. So all these challenges that we have identified, and of course you are all aware of, we will try to tackle uh, with this uh, presentation and uh, also with the tools that we have provided through the Leap for FNSSA project, but also uh, hopefully in the development of the work in the future. So the knowledge management tools in Leap for FNSSA, the objectives of uh, bringing up those uh, and um, develop them, first of all, to design and implement tools and concepts in knowledge management to improve the quality of information. As we have said before, there's a lot of uh, scattered information out there, but we want to, we, we had uh, as an objective to make the information being of good quality that will allow the communication between scientists, policymakers, and practitioners, not forgetting the farmers, of course, although I think we should discuss about how this information can reach farmers. Another objective uh, was to map and cluster ongoing and recently finished projects contributing to the FNSSA roadmap. As Stefan uh, explained, the FNSSA roadmap was actually the the starting point of the project and of our work. Map and clustering will allow strengthening coherence and coordination within and across clusters, and will hopefully optimize research and innovation programs relevant to FNSSA in the future, but also uh, throughout the project duration. One other, another objective of the knowledge management tools that we put forward is uh, to strengthen the knowledge base in order to increase the efficiency of the, of the, of the long-term partnership that will become a platform in the future. So new instruments for data analysis, uh, yeah, instruments uh, supporting ex existing knowledge networks, enhancing capacities for data management and communication were, let's say, uh, some of the targets of this work. And finally, to encourage better outputs from the involved projects. There is a lot of information coming out from the different activities, but how to present it in a nice way and uh, actually finding the core of the findings is uh, always a challenge. So next slide. Yes, thank you. So uh, what we will talk about a bit more in uh, detail today is uh, the two tools that we have produced in Leap for FNSSA. Of course, they are under development, but we are in a good uh, way to present them with confidence and uh, uh, present it to you in order to take advantage of these tools. Uh, we have the project database that is freely available to the public. There's a lot of information of FNSSA related funded projects with different uh, kinds of categorizations, or if you may call them clustering, it's also a way to see this. 
uh, there are geographic categor categorizations, thematic ones, uh, type of project ones, type of funders, a lot of different things. I will present it to you in more detail. And then Petronella will present to, to you the knowledge extractor pipeline system, which is an uh, artificial intelligence tool for more advanced searches based on the database that we have, but also uh, other information out there. So I will start with presenting shortly the project, the FNSA project database. I think I saw also in the chat that uh, the link is provided. Thank you very much. It is available at the leap for fnsa website. Uh, you can find a window called FNSA project database. You go into there and you enter the world of the FNSA projects. Well, what kind of projects do we have there? We have uh, some prerequisites for uh, which projects are in, included in the database. And the main one, as I see it, is uh, the one and uh, main prerequisite that we have for this partnership that it has to be members from both continents. So it is not about having European researchers doing research in Africa. It is about European and African researchers or any kind of partners doing things together. Um, the projects uh, fall into the themes uh, of the FNSSA domain. And the funder so far includes uh, the EU, the AU, and also some national funding organizations. So uh, uh, countries uh, um, that uh, finance uh, their own projects with European and African partners are also, let's say, included in the database uh, at the moment. And we are trying to develop this part quite um, intensively nowadays. There is a continuous update with new projects and there is uh, a nationally funded projects as well. Next slide, please. And actually, Christian, I liked your comments, so I can come back to that. I will just give you some, uh, some uh, visual, uh, some uh, extracts of uh, how the FNSA project database look like. And then, of course, or maybe you do it already, you can go in and uh, check for yourselves how it looks like. At the moment, I think we have uh, more than the projects that are uh, now shown in the database. I think we have about 340 or 50 projects coming into the database. It looks like this. Uh, you enter from the, again, from the Leap for FNSSA website. Uh, there are a lot of different um, uh, information that you can uh, find. So next slide. For instance, what you can uh, do is to have a, ma a, a map of the different, um, of the projects on a map. So when you click in, uh, on one country, in this case, I took the example of Tanzania, which I think nowadays has many more projects, you end up in having a list of the projects that are actually happening, occurring, the activities occurring in Tanzania. So it's not about having a Tanzanian partner, but it is about having a project occurring in Tanzania. And the same actually is valid for uh, uh, the European um, countries, uh, you can find a map of Europe with uh, the projects, the collaborative projects, as Christian said, that uh, happening, some activities happening in Europe. So you have the map, um, the map tool. So if you go to the next slide, so in each project, and I took uh, one project of the 350 that we have in the database, there is quite a lot of information about the project itself. So if you click into one project, you get into the more details about uh, the specific one that you chose for your reasons. Uh, a lot of information on the left part of the project with uh, the name, the roadmap theme. Again, we should not forget that we have the roadmap themes, let's say, as a, as a guide on uh, categorize the, the projects, uh, what kind of, what type of project it is, what kind of keywords to, have been uh, used, the countries where the 
research or uh, innovation is happening. Um, partners, uh, some information about the websites, and then of course the description. So you get a glimpse, the first glimpse of the project itself. And then if you want to, let's say, go further, there are also some links that you can use. Um, next slide, please. What is a new, um, let's say, feature of the database or a new or a recent feature of the database is that we have also listed the partners involved in these projects. So nowadays, I think we have about uh, a list of about 2,000 partners, both European and African, that have been, uh, that are involved, let's say, in these uh, partnership projects. And it is a quite impressive one. Of course, you can easily get lost. <laughs> uh, again, talking about how to manage the knowledge, the knowledge out there is a big issue. But I think it's a good start if you wish to, let's say, find some partners uh, that are working in a certain area of uh, yeah, research and innovation. You can also see that the, the type of organizations are, let's say, uh, on the left side. So you can see a categorization there and uh, a lot of other things that, um, that uh, show up when you list the different partners. Again, uh, I think the best way to get acknowledged with this database is just to go in there yourselves and try to find out what's there. We are always here for any kind of support that you wish to have when it comes to the functioning of the database. Next slide, please. But again, it's not only about uh, projects, it's also about partners. Uh, and before I give the floor to Petronella, I just want to mention that we are uh, following the GDPR restrictions and in the database, we do not have names, let's say, of actors as individuals. And this is something that uh, is being dealt with in other parts of uh, Leap for FNSSA. The floor to you, Petronella. Um, thank you, Yanis, and uh, good morning, and a very welcome, a very warm welcome to everybody that is participating in this session. Um, I'm going to pick up from where Yanis left off. Um, what he said is that there's two components of um, the knowledge management system that the Leap for FNSSD project is um, developing. And um, the second aspect is what we call the knowledge extractor pipeline system. It is um, an AI system that um, runs on open access software. So it should be possible for you to use it once we have made it um, available. We are finalizing um, in the next few months the development of this um, uh, software. Um, so just a reminder of uh, why we need such tools. Um, the status quo in as far as uh, collaborative projects um, are concerned is that um, there's many projects, some of whom are still ongoing, others have completed, and they've produced um, tons and tons of documentation, project reports, publications, databases, so there's a lot of information that is out there that if we use it, I believe that it would really help us in terms of um, making better use of resources, but also um, just able to solve some of the FNSSA challenges that we have. Uh, but the situation that we have at the moment is that it is a huge task to find um, the right information. Um, within a short space of time, which is almost always the case when decisions need to be made. So there's then a need for one to be able to first define the information, to analyze it, um, to aggregate when necessary, and then to, to report for the purpose of uh, informing decisions making, whether they are decisions about who to collaborate with or decisions about uh, where we need to put extra um, attention, maybe some of the roadmap themes and topics do not have sufficient uh, research that has been going on. 
So we would need to see that we need to um, mobilize for more research in specific areas, as well as uh, for funders to also be able to make um, the right decisions um, in terms of funding priorities. Uh, so that's information, like we said, until recently, actually, um, this project database has made uh, quite a difference in terms of uh, having um, access to um, the list of projects, the information that relates to them. So that information was not um, centralized. It was uh, scattered everywhere in different um, project databases, as well as um, the literature, like I said, massive documentation as well as uh, websites. Some of these websites actually, once the project ends, then they are not maintained. So even when one tries to get the information, it is not um, so easy. But what we found at the beginning of this project is that uh, there were actually more than 300 websites that pertained to uh, projects, uh, collaborative projects that had been implemented under this partnership. So the knowledge management system of the lip for fnss like we said, it seeks to, to make um, this information uh, more easily accessible, but also easier to, to manage that wealth of knowledge um, that is out there. And this just shows the different uh, components of it, the database, as well as the KOPS uh, components. So what is, KOPS. Uh, KOPS in simple terms is a tool uh, using advanced text mining and artificial intelligence um, technologies to be able to organize that information in such a way that at the click of a button, you would be able to do some analysis and um, to be able to get some results. There is emphasis on visualization as well, because somehow I think um, with the increase in the use of smartphones, we've all become quite um, a visual um, population. So as much as possible, if you want people to um, understand information and be interested in it, then you are better off using visualization tools to present that information. So the KOPS um, makes use of the project websites that I made reference to. Uh, the documents that have been generated from um, the, the past and ongoing projects and um, by documents, we mean project reports, publications, workshop reports, and other forms of documentation that is out there. And then the database as well, um, the information that is in the database is also integrated in the, um, the KOPS system. And then um, once you have uh, all that input into the system, then you'll be able to generate um, some outputs or decision-making tools by making use of uh, various search interfaces. So my next slide is just going to illustrate um, some of the outputs that um, will be possible to get using this KOPS um, tool. Um, yeah, sorry, just uh, for those that um, are experts in this kind of thing, this um, gives an insight into, I think, the, the engine or the background of how data is um, processed in the system. So you've got the data acquisition from the various sources, and then um, there's classification of um, that information, and then um, that it assists with machine learning. And then it leads to information extraction, um, data mining, and uh, knowledge um, generation, which is the ultimate um, interface that the user has. So this um, is just a screenshot of some of the outputs that we are able to get uh, from this uh, KOPS. If you look at this, um, in terms of how information has been uh, classified within the KOPS system, we've made use of um, several types of uh, vocabularies and um, those that are familiar with, um, you know, the terminology that is used, agrofolk is um, a very well-known kind of vocabulary that is peculiar to FNSSA. And then we also made use of um, expert um, assistance in terms of uh, classifying of the information. So this um, screenshot just um, shows um, the results for a search query that uh, focuses on sustainable innovative solutions for water and sanitation, for example. Um, 
you we also have um, some uh, geo the link of um, this information in chaos uh, to um, Google Maps so we are able then to get links um, in terms of um, the queries that you make you can get the the geo names uh, the geographical locations of the projects um, much like what Jan is um, showed, but are now linked with um, Google Maps for searching for a location of different uh, projects. Uh, if you are interested in uh, also the analyzing the frequency with which um, certain uh, phrases or concepts are appearing in this world of um, data that has gone into the system, then you could generate a word cloud. So if you just look at this uh, screenshot of um, a word cloud that looks at um, the, the themes related to the themes uh, for the global FNSSA activity, uh, you see that food security is um, a phrase that appears quite frequently in terms of um, the documents and the websites. And then research and training, um, that is also um, phrases that are appearing uh, quite a lot. Um, adaptation to climate change, uh, maybe not so much as we would want it, uh, but I believe that now with more and more projects that are focusing on that, we will be able to see an increase in terms of um, information um, that relates to that. So this is just an example of the kind of visual outputs that you can get. Um, and then if you want to um, look, for example, of uh, maps uh, of partners by countries involved, um, you look at um, the one that is shown here. We took a screenshot of Cameroon as a country. We want to also just be able to analyze in terms of the partners that are active in the FNSSA projects in Cameroon, which are the partners that are most involved. So the 44% that Maroon um, actually refers to university or higher education institution uh, kind of categorized um, partners. And then you've got um, research organizations, 22%, uh, and then non-governmental organizations, 11%, and 22% um, is government agency. So one can also see from that list that maybe we do not have so much of um, a private sector participation um, in the projects that have so far been captured from um, that particular country. So it also helps in terms of somebody that is interested in stakeholder mobilization that you are able to see which are the stakeholders that are less active that we must target because we don't want to leave anybody behind. We want all the stakeholders um, to bring value in terms of addressing the challenges. And then this um, one just shows uh, also uh, the frequency within which uh, certain topics um, appear. Um, and you link that with the types of research projects. So Jan has showed that the projects that are in the database, there's different classifications for those projects. We've got what we call applied research projects. Uh, development um, and innovation research projects, uh, and then for what we call fundamental projects and um, institutional um, capacity building projects and personal uh, capacity building projects, as well as uh, projects that are aimed at strengthening partnerships um, and alignment projects. So that would be my um, vertical uh, axis. And then if you look now uh, for the applied research projects, for example, water management, uh, most of the water management um, kind of projects, they fall under applied and uh, development research. So maybe we are not um, doing so much capacity building uh, for those kinds of projects. So that would also be a possibility for one to, you know, to, to focus um, where we want to encourage um, increased capacity development. And then if you look at the green that refers to adaptation to climate change, so um, adaptation to climate change is a topic. It is also quite prevalent in applied research projects, uh, development oriented um, kind of research projects, also less in terms of um, projects that are classified as personal capacity development projects, but there's also quite um, 
yeah, a significant amount in terms of projects that are of a nature of partnership, development and alignment. So these are some of the kind of outputs that, that one would be able to generate um, by making uh, different uh, queries within the scale of system. Um, Yanis, is it back to you? Um, yeah, not yet. Yeah, maybe I can uh, take the slides, but I was thinking that uh, after that, maybe we can uh, introduce the first Mentimeter questions. But just to sum up of what uh, myself and Petronella described here, uh, the value of the KMS for the FNSC platform, we believe it is uh, a very high one for the following reasons, because it enables the multi-dimensional analysis of the FNSC partnership and it guides to future decision making. I mean, this is something that uh, without information, you cannot make the right decisions, let's say. Um, informing the decision making in terms of defining thematic priorities uh, for research and innovation focus of the future platform. It is also a very important aspect. Uh, to provide information on the most active organizations, existing alliances and potential new partners in order to market the alliance is something that uh, we should uh, use, let's say, for forming the, the future platform, since we are now at this stage of our project. And it's also to provide basis for strengthening of alliances amongst uh, projects, partners doing similar work through the clustering. That will be uh, one of the aspects that uh, will be discussed uh, later on. So let's see what we have for next slide. Yes, um, I think uh, it would be a good idea, colleagues from CM, if we go for the first round of the Mentimeter questions, and then we can continue a bit uh, with introductory for the clustering. So the floor is, yeah, okay. I can see already the Mentimeter questions. So I guess for some of you that you've done it already is easy to do now. Uh, for those of you that have not done it so far, you go to www.menti.com. You enter the code 78258223. And you will see soon be asked this question. A very straightforward one. Are you aware of the existence of the FNSSA project database? And this is probably mostly for us to have an idea on how much more effort we should do in order to reach the public. Of course, today we have a lot of leap for FNSSA partners with us, so they should probably be aware of it. I think it's rather equal, <laughs> which means that we still have some work to do in order to make the database more known to the general public. So now things are happening towards a yes. Maybe we can take the next question. You can still vote for question number 28, uh, 28. But uh, whenever ready, you can probably move to next question. And the next question is, do you actively search for relevant projects or partners when building a collaboration? And I do hope that it is a yes, but of course I don't want to get some bias in it. So this is for us to realize how important database or a knowledge management system is. 
for you. So hopefully everybody recognizes that not everybody knows everybody. So we need to go out there and find out who does what. And questions are still, uh, replies are still coming. Maybe we can proceed to the next. So what kind of information do you usually search for when building a collaboration? What is what that is most important to you to know? So you can type in, in a cloud, what kind of information do you usually search for when you do this active searching for activities or partners that you're interested in? This is a tricky one, so we will give you a bit more minutes. Someone said that the theme, the thematic field is the most important one. The topics, the calls is something that has come up. Who is actively engaged in the country? The research capacity, how, how, let's say engaged or dedicated this group or person is in the specific theme, the reputation of the organization. So it's different things. It's not easy to prioritize, let's say, in the database or the knowledge management system needs to be broad. Yeah. And also some statistical evidences to, let's say, develop the information for the activity or the partner a bit more. The relevance, how do the partners contribute to the overall program? Past collaboration and their role. So lots of different things that are needed, let's say. Thank you. Maybe we can ask the next question. This is very, very valuable input because we realize that uh, a lot of things are needed to satisfy all the needs. <laughs> So next question is what kind of information for FNSSA projects do you wish to have available? It's a bit similar, but not exactly, since we are now talking about the actual FNSSA projects and what you wish to have available. Outcomes and objectives, this is something that um, has been a discussion in our group on how to do this since we are also um, list projects that are ongoing. So it's not a lot of outcomes and objectives, uh, outcomes out there. Of course, the objectives are there. Some reports, it is also important that we've been trying to enrich the database with either the reports or the links to the reports. Keywords is something that is very, very tricky. And we've been working with that on how to find out which project has the right keywords that characterize itself, but also gives a description to other people out there. Key performance indicators clearly listed. That's a very, very challenging and demanding one, but it might be something that a lot of people out there are interested, especially when it comes to maybe decision makers or policy makers. Okay. 
it's a lot of valuable input here. Um, look at the amount of links between institutions and find out about the relevance or the strength. Clear results frameworks. Yeah. It is something that we at the moment do not have in the database so much because uh, a lot of the projects are ongoing. So this is something that we should think of for the future. Some themes as well are very important. This is perfect. Um, trusted information out there in the internet to find out what is trustworthy or not. I think we are using the mainstream um, uh, web links for the information that we put in the database. So I think we are on the right track there. Um, a lot of different kinds of information that is more specific for the FNSA projects. Thank you very much. Maybe we can continue with the next one, which is, the, I think, the last one for this uh, set of questions. OK. Um, is it the same one as before? Or? No, this one is focusing on partners. Yeah, thank you. So what about the partners? What kind of information for partners would you like to have available? Not the projects, but the partners. And if you tell us names, then we have a problem, <laughs> the GDPR restrictions, but we must find, let's say, ways to overcome this somehow. So when you search for information on partners, what do you wish to have available when it comes to the information provided by a knowledge management system? So maybe expertise, not expertise, but experience, the partner's profile, links to social networks, how these partners are linked. So maybe even the type of a partner, I would say. The reliability is kind of difficult to grasp in such a database, I guess, but uh, maybe the amount of projects that are connected to a partner might help on that. Visibility, the areas of expertise, all of these can be a very long list of expertise areas since a lot of big institutions work with everything, let's say. Uh, I think we get a lot of ideas, very useful ideas here. A bit more details on the, on the, different institutions on what they are experts should help. Perfect. Um, publications is something that um, we have considered, of course, because we are a group uh, working with a database that also includes people from the libraries of the different institutions, and they are very keen on doing such exercises and they've done these exercises before. So this is something that we could think of for the future. Thank you all for all these excellent inputs and uh, ideas and also identification of the, of the needs of the knowledge management system tools that uh, you would like to see and have in order to allow you to continue with your collaborations. I suggest that we now stop this and that I give a very short introduction 
for the next uh, steps uh, of this um, event, then uh, in that um, case, I would ask you to share your screen again. If that's yeah, okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, whilst I'm doing that, can I just make a comment? I think just Absolutely. looking at the just looking at the range of um, information uh, requirements um, that we've seen from this um, these Mentimeters, people want different things. They want a lot of information, whether it's for a partner, whether it's information about the projects that have happened. So it actually makes it then, you know, very, very important to have these kinds of tools because there is no way that um, yeah. if there is no system that enables you to process this information, you would be able to get the information. Sometimes even the networks are not sufficient, especially as we are con continually trying to expand um, the networks themselves. So it makes a very compelling case for a knowledge management system. I think this is um, a slide that we had missed before the Mentimeter. So if yes. you go through this one, then I'll go to the clustering one. I can do that, yes. Perfect, thank you very much. But uh, as you said, Petronella, I must admit that I'm very satisfied with the results. Not so much of the content there, of course, the, the needs are there, but uh, about defining that the needs are so diverse and of course, uh, broad ones. So uh, it is obvious that the knowledge management system and the tools um, are, are needed, let's say, and it might be so that it is going to be one of the, of the main, um, let's say, uh, motivation why to join such a platform that uh, Leap for FNSA is envisaging. So uh, just to sum up and maybe describe a bit uh, on the contributions to the platform of the, the KMS uh, system and the KMS tools, uh, our work will focus on setting up the project database and the operational K KMS, which will be functional and based on stakeholder needs. And actually we are here today and we've been grasping the stakeholder needs for quite some time now. We also need to realize how to make it even more functional, although we believe that the database is already quite functional, but we need to improve and we have to improve. We also, um, plan and its reality that this project database and the tools will be open to everyone to use. The user friendliness is something that we are really aiming at, but it's not the easiest thing to do uh, with these very advanced tools that we are applying to, we are implementing. So any kind of uh, help or support or ideas on that would be very, very, appreciated from our sites and you have uh, some email addresses that you can uh, contact us uh, in the database and of course it needs to be easily uh, updated in the future we might not be all here after 10 15 years so we need to have a system that will be able to be updated uh, well hopefully by itself um, to continue the contributions to the platform, the access to the KMS will be a key added value of the platform as we believe and as I said before, and should be a convincing reason why to join. And uh, again, the contact issue, uh, finding contacts from the database, we believe is also a strength uh, that, uh, will, that the tools will bring into the platform. So please, Petronella, the floor is yours to introduce the next session. Petronella, we cannot hear you or I cannot hear you. Sorry, I was talking when muted. So the next session that we are moving into, um, we are introducing, uh, for some of you that might not be familiar with it, um, the concept of clustering of NSSA project, which is also part of the efforts to kind of um, have, uh, create synergies in, in terms of the work that has been going on and any future work that uh, we're going to do in this domain bringing the right people together with common interests. But we need um, 
um, an approach or a methodology that allows us to be able to make sure that uh, we have um, you know, the right kind of uh, clustering that has happened for value to be derived out of it. So in this um, next session, we kind of um, getting more focused um, to introduce to you a tool that we have developed on this project, which is um, the clustering. And then after that, we will break out into some groups uh, for a bit of more detailed um, discussion, but also um, with like-minded kind of uh, partners in those groups. So Yanis, back to you with regards to this clustering session. Thank you, Petronella. So move on to the slides. Um, next slide, please. Uh, yeah, what, what is clustering? I think it has been described uh, quite a lot, trying to find ways to group a set of um, partners or all themes uh, in order to move towards a similar direction and develop a bit more the, the ideas that uh, this group is characterized by. Um, it has been described as one of the ways to work with in the roadmap and uh, what is uh, up to us is that uh, we need to decide on how these clustering activities uh, should, could look like. So next slide. Um, it can offer a lot of advantages and it's, uh, this is something that uh, will be discussed in the, in the working, in the breakout room. So we don't have to go into very much detail. Uh, different actors, different stakeholders have different uh, uses and different uh, objectives with the clustering uh, sessions. And this is what we will get out from the breakout rooms, hopefully. Next slide. And the expectations. Yes, these are some examples what I would expect, let's say, as Yanis, by participating in clustering uh, activity. And you will develop it a bit more during the breakout sessions. I might be somewhere just to get to know each other. I might be and see, of course, what they're doing. I might be there in order to strengthen the networking. I might be there in order to share and exchange the practices that uh, I am familiar to and I've developed myself. I might be in a group uh, working together in order to identify common objectives or priority areas for future work that a lot of researchers are forced to do since uh, research is becoming a very tough area for funding, future funding, let's say, and also identify who is doing what in order to know where to move. And for policy feedback, identified needs or gaps that might also help a researcher. So these are some examples of the expectations that you will probably have to think for yourself uh, during the next uh, uh, yeah, session. So some of the common activities, can include different things. There have been projects that have been uh, coming together and produced, for instance, uh, books, have uh, developed uh, common uh, workshops that uh, were offering to um, policymakers ideas for the future. They have been, there have been uh, projects that have developing uh, common uh, platforms uh, with the information that they have uh, produced during the projects. And uh, of course, there have been projects that have been uh, participating in, in each other's activities in order to strengthen their, let's say, position in a certain theme. So all these are examples that have happened and are already happening, let's say, when it comes to, to examples. Next slide, please. And please list them all. Again, joint organization of events, collective participation in events, participation in annual meetings. And of course, we're talking about the, the clustering of projects or initiatives. There are several things that uh, we list here, but we would like your opinion uh, during the breakout rooms. Next slide, please. And now I think we come to the part that I will explain how the next 20 minutes of your life will look like, or actually 35 minutes of your life. Uh, you will receive a question now uh, 
asking yourself which group you would like to join. We have split it, the groups in uh, three categories. We have one having researchers. So if you feel you, if you are a researcher, you join that group. There will be the next group uh, that we call policy makers. In case you are, for instance, uh, representing a funding organization, you should end up in that group. And there will be a third group that we called, if I'm not mistaken now, but you will realize yourselves, we call it um, private sector practitioners. If you feel that you belong to that category, you join that breakout room. Uh, the meaning with these uh, rooms are to discuss in a bit more relaxed um, atmosphere the, some questions that we will put into the chat and will be actually answered later on in the Mentimeter when you come back after 20 minutes. Uh, your uh, uh, moderator of the group will uh, define which of the questions you will uh, talk about. Again, try to be a bit uh, more uh, creative than the examples that I gave you. It was just for you to yeah, orient yourselves. So I will put again in the chat the questions that uh, you will be discussing. And uh, I ask the moderators to copy these questions and choose the ones that, uh, that you wish. So we come back after 20 minutes and uh, you will receive the warning that uh, the session will finish in 20 minutes and then we will get 10 minutes to answer the questions in the Mentimeter after the discussion. So shall we open? Yes. Okay. And by now you have thought in which group you would like to join. And Petronella will lead the research group. Jackie will lead the practitioners slash. C'è non si muovono ad entrare. Vedi, questa è una cosa che parte di un casino di tempo. Breakout rooms. And I will go to the policy makers. You can see on the down right the breakout rooms. We can't leave. Sorry, I can't see the. Uh, yeah, I see it. We kindly invite all the participants to select and choose the room in which you can join. Thank you.
Okay, we, we kindly invite the participants to select the room to join according to their category. React upon, and uh, it is the questions that you've been thinking uh, or discussing throughout the breakout rooms. We're a bit behind the schedule, but I think the discussion, at least in our group, was very, very useful for us to consider, reconsider, uh, think, think together about future actions uh, within the project uh, and the platform in the future. So if the organizers can bring up the Mentimeter questions, then you can go in and react upon. So what expectations do you have when participating in clustering activities? And of course, now you can refer to the discussion that you had before. It will be a very, very valuable input for us. So go to menti.com, use the codes 78258223. And some first replies are coming in. And I guess that by the answers, we might be able to identify which group you belonged to, or maybe not. But please come with some outcomes of your discussion during the breakout rooms. Finding synergies, exchange of skills and knowledge. Resource mobilization effectiveness. Putting specific ideas on the larger context in a synergistic manner. And lots of other input so it is from the very very simple ones to meet potential partners to a bit more advanced ones we can continue with the next one so can you have can we have the next question so here I will rephrase a bit the question, but uh, I'll read it first. What kind of possible common activities with uh, sister initiatives or projects that would maximize impact could you think of? So specifically like concrete activities that you could think of in order to synergize, to make the synergies that you were thinking of in the previous question. And of course, some of them have been mentioned before, but maybe you have some other ideas. Some concrete common activities. Joint demos and publications. Some joint capacity building activities at the national level. And actually, I would add, I would try to write down also maybe on the regional level in order to save resources. The quality assurance and compliance activities. some information strategies about food quality, reaching our activities, different ones, 
I guess the intensity of the reaching out activities also plays a big role. Add the researcher's value to challenging practices and validate the knowledge. Summarizing recommendations, the thing that policymakers love, uh, half a four page with five dots. Very important. To open it to other union economic communities. Great, this is some new things. Training of trainers very important in different levels, joining forces to add value. This is great. Maybe we can move on to the last question of this session at least. So in what way or how would you prioritize to cluster with other initiatives. And um, I think the key word here is how. How would you prioritize? Who would you cluster first with? And how would you do that? Would you consider, for instance, clustering with stakeholders of the same area or would you go for including totally different kind, other kinds of stakeholders. And how would you do that? And of course the how I would expect here, that may be the platform that we are building now, be one of the ways. Your knowledge, coffee with stakeholders to agree together. I guess maybe virtual one. Link actors with common goals and diverse backgrounds. Hopefully one of the uses of the platform. Data analysis and interpretation. Very important. The how should be interdisciplinary, but focused on a defined area, country or region. Con contextualize activities so that outcomes are relevant and usable. And this is something that is easily said and done, but we need to focus on that. Cluster with key stakeholders and decision makers through new politics to be implemented. Also a discussion about introduction of new themes of interest of the society, of course. This is great. I think we're gonna use quite a lot of this material for our next Communities of practice as Petronella says seem to be a key instrument. With these comments, I would really like to thank you all for the contribution and Petronella, I think I will give you the floor also to thank and uh, say some nice final words, words from our side. Um, thank you, Yanis. Yeah, it's been a very exciting uh, one and a half, uh, two hours. Uh, we've really enjoyed, I enjoyed the, the discussions in the breakaway rooms. And thank you for everybody that has made it possible. 
um, the contributions that you have given, we've noted them and we will certainly uh, try and integrate them in terms of how we prioritize what we need to do with regards to the database, the KMS, the clustering activities um, in the remainder of the project, but also for the recommendations going forward um, into the platform. So just lastly, uh, thank you to, to the power behind the session, um, the CM team, uh, Stephanie, Jackie. Uh, there was a point that Jackie made about an idea for another uh, good morning <laughs> breakfast <laughs> session. So I don't think we're done yet. It's just the beginning for, for more ideas. So thank you everybody. And uh, please remain these more exciting things coming in this um, session as well. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Petronella and Johannes. You indeed made it already a good morning. May I ask you, uh, the CM team, please, um, to activate the uh, Mentimeter 36, please, um, to conclude here with, the, uh, with this session around the knowledge management system that is designed uh, in LEAP for FNSSA. What kind of information would you like to see in the knowledge management system for the future FNSSA platform? So please use this as um, the last opportunity in this morning um, to share uh, your needs, what is required for you, which kind of information, knowledge, data uh, would you like to see in the system for the future FNSSA platform? Today's good morning is dedicated to the question of what is an appropriate knowledge management and communication system. So the broader picture, the knowledge management system is one element of this framework, the digital sphere in which we can exchange information, knowledge, where we can link with each other, where clusters could be established or uh, linked with each other. So please, what kind of information would you like to see in the knowledge management system for the future FNSSA platform. And the first tier is effective and efficient data management. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Colleagues, we are currently 44 participants here. So um, I suggest we give us five minutes to collect here some of the answers. Um, again, become a part of it. You are a part of it while contributing here. Uh, we will analyze the outputs of uh, our good morning sessions, of course, and all will be in one way or another fit into the co-design of the future platform. Uh, what else would you like to see? Topics, approaches, partners, projects, area, region, and country. Thank you. Increases open access to publications and data. A knowledge management system supports the generation of knowledge. Information is only a vehicle and small component here. Therefore, the KMS must channel information between actors to achieve knowledge. Thank you so much. Um, training MEL, that will be a relevance tool that allow all partners to manage their projects perfectly. Access to publications. A user-friendly feedback section, monitoring and evaluation of information, new opportunities. I lost the new opportunities. Uh, things are moving here, but that is how it is. We have a big diversity of answers here and things are changing, but we will record all this and um, feed this into the uh, coming process, uh, in particular here in the development of our project database in KEOPS as well as in the clustering process, uh, and not only the clustering for the projects, but clustering in general. Uh, new opportunities for academia, lessons learned and feedback. So all this kind of information you would like to see in the coming knowledge management system, in the uh, growing knowledge management system we are already working at. Thank you so much. We have 13 feedbacks, colleagues. We have 44 uh, here, person together in this uh, session. Please add some more information. You will help Petronella and Johannes tremendously 
with your comments here and the overall process to design not only a knowledge management system, but also to design the overall framework for knowledge management and communication. So let's have uh, a further minute for your last inputs here, please. And then we should move on to our next session. Thank you so much, 16 contributions so far or 16 person who contributed i'm not sure about this number here to the right uh, because there were many already felt like uh, i felt that these were more than 16 18 i read now great um i suggest colleagues since we are a bit late in time um Let's stop here for now. You know um, how to contact the Leap for FNSSA project, but also um, other actors here. Um, continue uh, linking uh, yourself with each other, but also uh, new colleagues to the platform here, to the project here. Um, may I please ask now, um, uh, because we want to give the floor to uh, the next session about uh, the FARA D groups, uh, it's a kickoff to establish FARA D groups for networking. Benjamin Akburi, may I ask you please uh, to share your slides um, and to start uh, the session about FARA D groups. Benjamin, can you hear me? Yes, something is going on. Your slides are there. Please change into the presentation uh, mode so that we can see the full screen. This works as well. Perfect. Uh, Benjamin, I cannot hear you in case you are speaking. Uh, please check your microphone and activate it. And then you can start with the session, please. Hello. Yes, now can, I can you hear, hear me you. now? Wonderful, right. Benjamin. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. Thank you very much. Law is yours. Yeah, OK. So good morning, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Benjamin Abubri, and I work for FARA, the Forum for Agricultural Research in Africa, as the lead specialist for knowledge management, uh, learning, and communication. And um, I'm going to be sharing with you the FARA tool, uh, sorry, the tool, the, the collaborative tool, which we popularly call it development through dialogue and the name is D groups. And so um, for the next few minutes, I will take time to try to explain what the D group is all about. Um, okay. So um, the D group is a long-standing successful international development initiative. And this has been in online since 20, 2002. And it's a global community that hosts very large fam uh, family of discussions related to international development. It is a partnership of development organizations. And so you have um, the FAO, UN agencies, and other major international NGOs being part of the D group partnership. And so the whole in, uh, idea is to have a collective interest to support global communications. The vision of D group is a world where every person can contribute to dialogue and decision um, to international development and social justice. Uh, D group is made up of 15 full partners, nine associate partners, and three project partners. This information can be found online and um, this, this, this membership keep growing and so um, things can change even after this, uh, this, this presentation. It was formally constituted as a non-profit foundation and registered in the Netherlands in 2009. And there are three different uh, D group membership options, which I'll be um, explaining in my next slide. First, you can see from this slide that um, the various logos are uh, some of the major institutions within the D group uh, partnership. And I mentioned that we have 15 full partnerships, the nine associate partners, and then 
three project partners. And all these partners have different levels of access and different level of benefits. FARA is one of the four partners and we have been operating D Group for the past 10 years. D Group is a web-based platform and it hosts, powers and connects groups across the globe, largely Africa and Europe. The platform is hosted and maintained by a service provider called Influence. And uh, Influence is a, is a small organization that um, specializes in this uh, platform. And we have been working with, it, with, with them uh, for the past years. They, we, the platform collaborates to ensure that we meet the various range of needs. And one unique thing about D Group is that because we are building the system together with the, with the service provider, we, we are able to make changes, uh, bring about improvements as and when necessary without going through any major regress process. At the moment, globally, um, and as I mentioned earlier, D Group is, is dominated by um, Africa partners and European partners. And we have close to over, we have over 700 communities. And out of these communities, about 50 are operated by FARA um, uh, for the African partnership. Now, some of these groups are private, some are public, others are open and closed. And if I say open and closed, some are not, they are not, they, they, are, they are largely um, within a certain uh, closed group who have the interactions. It could be a board of an institution or some technical advisory team within an institution. It could be moderated and some are unmoderated. Moderated in the sense that you can hold discussions where um, every conversation has to be sc uh, screened before it becomes public. Unmoderated means that some other, discuss I mean, other discussions can just be made public once they are, they are sent by any member. And it is the communities are largely, as I mentioned, Africa and Europe. At the moment, and as of yesterday, um, globally, D Group has about 1.1 million registered uh, plus registered users, and FARA has over 40,000 um, D Group members, largely African partners, and then uh, followed by European partners. And um, it, daily, D Group um, delivers close to 400,000 emails um, in, in a day. And these exchanges, 50%, are with, with and within African countries and European partners. Now, um, the D Group uh, is, is a very powerful tool that has very unique um, uh, membership management where uh, members can be created by the admin or you can be added by the admin, invited by an email or requested um, by any of the members for you to join. We can also do bulk import of members using Excel. And this is done where you have attended a program or you've put together members and they agree that they can be added through whatever um, agreement method that has been reached. Uh, members have the opportunity to update their own data and then all requests to join the group are approved by the admin of administrator of the group. Members, however, are able to initiate their own exit, meaning that you can exit the group or the, 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 your membership at any point in time. And finally, the list can be exported to Excel from the database. So even if I have 40,000 members, I can export it as an administrator to Excel. In terms of security compliance, it, um, it is worth mentioning that the D group is, is GDPR compliant um, and um, with our head, the, the service provider headquarters in Switzerland, it's controlled by the admin. And so any message that is not, um, that is not palatable, it's not allowed or it's not broadcasted for members to have access uh, to, to it. Uh, you can access it through email and um, it's all messages of D group come to your email 
And then you can also um, access it through a browser using a password. Uh, mem mem members, uh, membership approval is uh, limited to the admin. And so as and when a member is found to be uh, to, to take off the member. However, where a member decides not to be part of this group as well, the member is able to, to exit. You can extract statistics from, from, from the, the membership based on the countries they are from, based on the expertise that they, they, be, they belong to, and then the, uh, other parameters that are in the statistics details. And this can be done either both Excel or in a mapping uh, in a mapping uh, uh, in a mapping platform in terms of administration capabilities you can change your settings you are able to customize depending on the language that you speak and so if you join d group you decide that you want to receive the communication in french then your all your communication will come through it in french even though i may have posted it in, in english and then so on and so forth so it's it's it allows for you to manipulate your own dashboard to, to, allow, to enable you have full benefit of the platform. Uh, the administrator is able to handle membership requests and uh, had full control of data and website. The administrator uh, is able to approve, delete and confirm and then statistics extraction, as I mentioned earlier. Now, uh, in terms of the EU AU uh, partnership within this Leap for FNSSA, the D Group, looking at what it has done so far, with regards to a number of platforms that have already been uh, that has that has been operating over the years, um, already point to the fact that there is that very close relationship between the AU EU uh, um, partnership. For instance. Uh, the part, the PyPad, the PyPad platform, which is part of this D group uh, hosted by Farah, has close to has close to um, fifteen thousand members, largely African and Europeans interacting almost every day. And so, and so, um, Sorry, excuse me, please. Excuse me, Benjamin. Sherry Mikhail, could you please uh, switch off your microphone? We can hear you. <laughs> thank you so much, Benjamin. Please go ahead. Okay. Sorry for thank, that. Thank, thank you, Stefan. Yes. Yeah, so, so um, it's just to point to the fact that um, there have already been steps that have been taken based on the approval that we had initially to create the Leap for FNSSA platform, which um, is being shown on the screen at the moment. Now, what is most important for me is that um, the ideas, the experiences, the lessons that have been learned from the PyPad, uh, PyPad platform is similar to that of the Leap for FNSSA. And so it makes, the, it makes it not to be starting from the scratch, but to have some lessons that can help us to be able to advance this. So this is just to say that the platform, as we have it, has um, the discussion, it has library, it has calendar, the members, and then the admin is able to manage this. Now, the D group allows you to have your own dashboard, as I mentioned earlier. And so it, it gives that opportunity for you to decide how you even receive your messages, whether you want to receive them uh, daily, you want to receive them weekly, or as and when it's posted. So you have that a lot of flexibility to be able to manage your platform. Now, in, I, I, I want to um, just emphasize that the, the D Group platform um, is situated within the broader framework of um, the agenda for knowledge management and for agriculture development in Africa. Now, FARA and uh, partners, i.e. the SROs, Cadesa, uh, Korav, Nazro, and then uh, um, Asareka, as well as Afas, have been engaged in working very closely to advance the uh, to advance knowledge management and to and to strengthen the knowledge ecosystem in Africa. And so the the knowledge management uh, agenda for agriculture development has we have been we have been able to identify ten key areas which 
we have been working with. And that is where we situate the D group as a platform. For instance, we are looking at knowledge partnerships and knowledge agenda, uh, knowledge inclusion programs, knowledge awareness programs, knowledge management excel excellence programs, national knowledge hub and digitalization, advanced knowledge processes, academic centers for knowledge sciences, business models and resource mobilization for knowledge management, fake news and quality information standards, and knowledge infrastructure and centers. Now, all these are the very key areas that we have identified through a rigorous process involving uh, key stakeholders in knowledge management within the continent. And these are the 10 key areas that we have identified that are relevant to knowledge management in the continent. And we see the drive for, um, for, the, for the EU AU platform to fall within uh, these parameters, especially on the knowledge partnerships, um and the knowledge uh, the knowledge um the, the knowledge partnerships the knowledge inclusion and there have already been discussions about the private sector well which we call the business models and resource mobilization so this framework is where the overall um concept of knowledge management is currently being situated now true it, um, we, we, we implement this through what we call the knowledge management challenge. And we, we, were, we have been very successful last year in uh, building the capacities, creating communities of practice, and then uh, strengthening the support for political, um, for the, strengthening the political support for knowledge management through the engagement of national focal persons, training them over a period of three months and certifying them as knowledge managers to be able to, to play the role of strengthening the knowledge ecosystem. Now, we, we realize that before any knowledge management agenda can, 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 can um, flourish, we really need to have the national systems also having that capacity to handle the knowledge um, ideas, the knowledge agenda that we have. So this slide is just to show you the, the, the level of capacities that we have had in terms of strengthening the knowledge ecosystem of which the D group is very key. Now, it, overall, in FARA, whatever knowledge management uh, services, products, or initiatives that we have, we, is being driven by what we call the Observatory for African Agriculture. And this is through the FARA data informs, um, of which the D group is part of it. And so if you visit this platform, you will be able to assess the D group as well. Now it provides products and services, learning, quality assurance and partnerships. And so the 10 agenda items that I had mentioned earlier are situated within this as a vehicle for driving or for, 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 for partnership and for collaboration. So it was very exciting to listen to the previous presenters on the KM system. And we find that very useful for the FARA data informs as I'm showing right now, because this platform is, does not look at, um, is not looking at uh, creating new platforms. It's, it's looking at linking the right platforms to it so that the AR4D fraternity in Africa are able to have access to relevant knowledge systems that exist. And so, we, we find that as, as a very good basis for, for collaborating within this context. Now, um, back to specifically on the D group, um, we, we want to ask ourselves what makes D group more powerful and preferred for an AU, EU pl uh, platform of this nature. First, we, I want to emphasize that um, this model that I've, I'm, I'm, you are seeing on the screen which uh, I believe Dr. Irene has presented in previous meetings, we, we, we situate the D group as a powerful tool within linking the projects, uh, uh, whether bilateral or, or, with, or as regional or continental uh, perspective, linking them very strongly within the platform of the D group. Now, this is because the D group is multilingual. And as I mentioned, you are able to um, access it based on the language of your choice. It is flexible and scalable because it is, it is a partnership. And as I mentioned, it's, it's a nonprofit partnership 
that we operate it. And so we are able to scale it. We're able to make changes to it as and when necessary. The most, the other most important thing is that it is it's easy to integrate into other websites of partners using RSS feed and using open APIs. And so it, it makes it very um, easy to be able to integrate with partners, uh, partner uh, websites. D group is non-commercial, as I mentioned, and it's respectful of privacy. It's GD GDPR compliant, and it targets the low bandwidth, uh, bandwidth uh, users. And, and so that, that, that also add up to the importance of it and the relevance of it within this. And I can say that the D group can be described as a global public good because it offers that opportunity for, uh, for, for, for collaboration, for discussions, for learning. And this is very, this is manifested within the PyPad platform. As I mentioned, those of you who are in the PyPad D group, you realize that even though PyPad project ended about two years ago, the platform continues to be very active. The, the members, uh, both from Europe and uh, Africa, uh, um, have been contributed to it. We have hosted discussions. And it, it, it still looks like PyPad is still a project that is running. But in actual fact, it's not running. And so we find that those lessons from PyPad very relevant within this EU, AU uh, platform. Um, and and uh, uh, finally, and as I conclude, I, the role of D groups in the AU EU platform is, is very, very critical. And I want to talk about it based on these three, four key uh, plat, um, points that I'm going, to, I'm going to mention. First, we are saying that D group is about appropriate technology and it is sustainable over time. And I've already used the PyPad platform to, to demonstrate this. And it's because of that, uh, it is not just sustainable financially, but it's also sustainable in terms of access and use. And that is why even when a project comes to an end without funding, the platform based on the interest of the interest that has been whipped within it are able to continue to, to work, um, to, to collaborate, to discuss and to find solutions to problems and to solve them together. Secondly, uh, secondly it is effective and, and a flexible tool. It doesn't require any technical um, input from the user because all the technical issues are handled by the, the, the service provider because he's part of the partnership. Whilst the group administrators are able to focus on communicating uh, issues within the group, collaborating, informing, sharing, and so on and so forth to ensure that the work within the group is done. It is a shared, on, it, it uses the shared ownership model. And that is why it is not just one partner that is investing into the, 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 the platform. There are different partners that are investing. And so you are all, we are only investing a fraction of our resources and the system will continue to run. And finally, <coughs> excuse me, finally, it, it results in the reduction in the duplication of and fragmentation of online communities. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, yeah, so this final point point to the fact that the D group platform, because all of us are working on one platform and bringing improvements, it will not result in duplication and fragmentation of online communities. So thank you very much for this opportunity. And I would like to hand over to Dr. Irene for the next stage. Thank you. Thank you very wow. much, Benjamin, uh, wow. for this presentation. You might have seen in the chat uh, already, we uploaded there the link uh, to Leap for FNSS AD groups. Uh, so please, uh, join D groups uh, and become a part of this process. Uh, thanks once again, uh, Benjamin, like always for this very insightful and excellent presentation about D groups. And indeed uh, we hand over now to you, Irene, the platform that we want, uh, please. The next session is dedicated uh, to the question, how can we move on? Please, Irene, the floor is yours. 
Thank you very much, uh, Stefan. And Benjamin, could you please stop sharing your screen so that okay. Irene can share her screen? Okay, just doing that. Thank you. <coughs> Are you seeing my screen? Uh, yes, I can also share the screen for you, uh, Irene. Um, um, I've uh, shared it. We have an update for the slides. Okay, but then you you have to control it. <laughs> I can do this if you like. Um, yeah, I've shared it, but let me know if you can also share it so that I stop sharing. It's up to you. Okay, so I stop sharing and you share yours. Okay. Okay, now my microphone is there. Do you see the full screen? Uh, yes. Okay, wonderful. So let me know okay. and I will move the slides for you, Irene. Okay, then. <laughs> right, thank you very much. Um, um, as I said, this, these are exciting times. And I, I thought that indeed the AU EU platform for research and innovation on FNSSA, uh, which is heralded by the International Research Consortium, is really the game changer waiting to happen. And I say that because we've known for years that, I mean, the, the, the level of impact that we're getting in relation to investments being made into research um, has been uh, underachieved to say the least. And a lot of times we know this is the case before because um, we um, know that the investments are not well channeled or better targeted. We know that there's a lot of um, um, duplication in the system signages are not taken advantage of, and generally there is incoherence in what we do. So uh, it is exciting that for the first time after years of cooperation between Africa and Europe, um, the EU, EU policy processes decide to put in place uh, a process that will help us to deal with this issue of coherence, duplication, and inefficiencies. And I think up, up to this point, um, the process being started a decade ago, up to this point, we think that we are on a game changer. Next slide, please. So this, I mean, I'm not being oblivious of the fact that, you know, there are huge complexities that, that exists, you know? Um, but, and of course, we know that we are talking of systems. We are talking of agri-food systems. We are talking of innovation systems. These are huge systems and very complex. So we acknowledge that. But I think given these complexities, we also have enough to help us to simplify processes by building on existing structures, identifying priorities, uh, and, and ensuring that stakeholder communities and tools that exist uh, are taken on board to help us to connect. You know, we've heard a lot this morning uh, to connect through dialogues, including science policy interfaces, um, prioritization, um, continuous lesson learning, capacity strengthening, decision support, targeting, financing, all these are existing in terms of structures, in terms of tools. And the point now is how do we connect them in the best way that will help us to deal with the issue of duplication and incoherence. And we've had, you know, in my previous presentation, I had actually highlighted that if you take the LIFO FNSSA project as we speak, we have established linkages with policy processes, you've heard um, from the 
um, project database uh, from Work Packet 3. We've heard about the KOPS. We also have uh, Agora and the great work being done behind the scenes by Work Package 4. We've just heard from um, Benjamin on D groups, the power it has and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the spread uh, of it and the huge lessons we have over the years running D group. There are also a number of multi-stakeholder platforms already existing. I probably will show example in the next slide. We have a huge innovation platform database that we're continuously learning from. We have clusters at different levels. And, and this morning we had a good discussion on clustering. And I think the clustering element is at the heart of trying to make the connections happen so that this platform that we are envisaging will happen. So really, I think that the IRC or the EU AU platform is not unsurmountable. Next slide. There's an example of the innovation platform that I was talking about. Already you have multi-stakeholder partnerships uh, there about in Sub-Saharan Africa alone, there are over 400 um, innovation platforms and different projects, including the technologies for um, agriculture, um, advancing agriculture transformation. There's a TAT program is using this. And I'm sure a number of us belong or to one IP or the other. And FARA continues to facilitate, uh, train facilitators to continue to facilitate these platforms. And there's a database that when you go in, you, you, you will see, you know, if you, um, can I go to the next slide? If you click, this is uh, um, of course a screenshot, but if you click on any of the, on the, of the IPs, it will give you information on the location, it describes it, and it gives you the facilitator and it tells you how it works. Yeah, we can go to the next uh, slide. So it, it has a lot of detail. It tells you, next slide, please. It tells you the kind of innovation that is going on, the technologies that's been advanced. This is example for cassava. Another example um, in Kenya, you know, um, uh, showing an online system designed to provide weather forecasts. Um, next slide. Um, another example, I think this one is describing uh, one from Nigeria uh, on cold hubs. And it, it gives you, if you click view details, it will give you further details on what is happening in situ by the day, you know, in, in these uh, platforms. And it tells you the partners that have come together. So innovations are, are ongoing and we need to link to these um, uh, platforms to know what local knowledge that Stefan is talking about is contributing to co-creation and also contributing to innovations. So all these things are going on. Next slide, please. All these things are going on. And so that's why I believe that the, the platform we are envisaging is not unsurmountable because we are not starting from scratch, to be quite honest. I'm sure that you must have seen this uh, knowledge uh, management uh, and communication framework that's been shown in, in, the, in this Good Morning uh, meetings. It shows that it has the four fields of co 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 coordination, uh, funders network, communication, interfaces for knowledge management, and a cluster network. And you see, if you look at it this way, it looks quite complicated, and, and so it is. But a lot is known now, and we have a lot of structures and, and tools in place that help us to make the connections. For me, that is the essential element of ensuring that we are connecting with as many communities, as many clusters, as many people who will contribute to the, the knowledge and innovation process. As I said, you have stakeholder communities, tools exist, I've mentioned. Um, all these that we've had today and in previous Good Morning meetings. And so I'm um, probably optimistic that if we go this route or trying to link up, not reinventing the wheel, of course, where we don't have enough clusters and groups, let's create them. But by all means, let's latch onto existing uh, networks, existing clusters, 
and let's use our powerful tools that we've had to make the, the connections. So they all contribute to this platform that we are trying uh, to build. Next slide. Yeah, so I think I want to paint a certain picture, colleagues, that we do acknowledge that this platform itself will have to grapple with complexities. It has to grapple with bringing all the AR for D or FN within the FNSSC domain, grab, bring them on board. But we have existing structures, we have tools. Uh, the Leaf for FNSSC project itself has shown it, and we have existing ones that we can connect to. So a few concluding reminders of slides that we've shown in, in the previous um, good mornings. I want to use that. It, this is one of the overarching slides that I used in Good Morning 2, trying to situate the Leap for FNSSA as one of the Horizon 2020 coordination support action that we've heard from Work Packet 3 today, powerful tools, database uh, of over 300 uh, projects, and knowledge management tools. Uh, we've heard from, we've seen what uh, Web Package 4 is doing. We've talked about um, the IRC that's traveled a bit of the road. And, and I touched on that day, we touched on the element of governance that everybody should contribute to the kind of platform we want. So this is not a platform that is uh, secluded or uh, the reserve of a group of people, a group of scientists, a group of funders. A group. This is a platform that is en engendering everybody's contribution to shape it to the, 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 the form that we want. And so um, the process of in participating in the governance is, is key. And of course, last but not the least, the good morning meetings have been about showing work packet two, the outcomes, how the long-term cyclical programming processes are going to contribute you know, uh, to the platform, uh, shipping the platform, but also provide the learning, provide the programming um, elements, prioritization, as well as we've heard a lot about uh, the building, community building uh, processes, particularly through the, the, the YA Alliance and the NIA. The NIA for me is also very critical because if you look at a lot of the work we've done is more in Sub-Saharan Africa, we're now bringing in uh, North Africa. NIA presents an opportunity. Um, we've also heard about the communication, knowledge management communication concept, the coordination uh, hub, and now the cluster network processes. So in, in a gist, we, we've come quite far and we cannot but be optimistic that we are on the, on the right track towards establishing uh, such a platform. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? I also touch that in addition to all that I've said and all that is being done, we know there's quite a lot to do between now and September when we launch the platform. So we're working hard to complete uh, our TCIP for uh, Live for FNSSA. We, we are going to have a, a serious action plan that takes us from now to the launch of the IRC. We're going to step up mobilization of partners for which this Good Morning meetings represent a, a key one and, and generally try to complete the, the project that ushers us into a final rise shop and hopefully launch the AU EU uh, platform um, in the form of an IRC. And of course, the final documentation and, and other processes. Uh, next slide. So it is no you a step a, a slide before this please. Hello. Oh, the slide before this one. Yeah. No, no, no. The next slide. There's a next slide before this. Okay, let's go. Yeah. So I, I am I'm quite optimistic that this envisage platform is really a game changer waiting to happen. It can happen because you see, we've touched on these key elements, the four elements of 
first of all, the information and communications communication system touched on the stakeholder dialogues. Excuse me, there's some. And Excuse then me, also, Ola Yuvola Agoro, could you please switch off your microphone? We can hear you. Sorry, Irene. Ola Yivola. Cannot hear us. Uh, Sian team, can you switch off his microphone? Is that possible? We are trying, but uh, something is going wrong. Okay. Okay, let me continue. Thanks, and please. Then, yes. Of course, um, we have established a link, which is very important. The science policy interfaces are important. And let's, let me also remind at the heart of it is trying to implement this FNSSA roadmap. This is what all this is about. And of course, we also acknowledge that in, in addition to these four elements of functions, there is an overarching function of continuous learning and capacity strengthening that we think will happen. If you see the connection you know, between the dialogues that should look at elements of uh, uh, prioritization by different levels, as well as uh, ensuring the inclusion of research and innovation agendas. There's a lot of uh, learning and uh, lesson learning that should go on in capacity building. So indeed, this, this is really waiting to happen and it's a game changer that we want to um, recommend uh, to everybody. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not over optimistic, but I think it's foreseeable that the benefits of joining the AU EU platform um, is quite clear that if we, we have all these success factors that I've mentioned, it is evident that the, the, our impact should improve. And if you're a member or you join it, of course, you facilitate your synergies and you have other institutional alliances and clusters that you will join. Uh, you optimize your own utilization and I've highlighted the access to the knowledge base and learning environment. This is what today has focused on. And of course, uh, on the last day, we're going to look at the funding uh, dimension of it. So as a member, you have access to or creation of funding programs and opportunities, and you stand to gain greater recognition and visibility, and also participate, as I said before, uh, in the governance of the platform and by accommodating areas of priorities that you find most relevant. So next slide. So for me, I, this is a call to action. Join the platform, uh, express your interests. Uh, there is the, the, the website and I think maybe Chiam team will put, if I'm wrong, will put the correct uh, uh, link. But these are the links, visit our website uh, and join uh, the platform. But by all means, uh, let us know what your expectations are. And we are very interested uh, to also um, get you par as part of uh, the design and also interested to build on your ideas. And that's why I think the, this opportunity for engaging with all of you is, is quite interesting and important. Last slide, please. I, I'm not sure whether I have uh, Mentimeter questions, but I think let me conclude by next slide, uh, thanking uh, all of you um, and encouraging you that this is really, we are onto something. And I think with all of your efforts and with your participation, we are sure uh, to set up an effective platform. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Irene. And may I ask the CM team, please, um, to show up with the Mentimeter questions uh, for Irene's presentation. Or we can also continue with those because we uh, did not raise this question after Benjamin's presentation. Um, first, are you familiar with FARA D groups? Please find in the chat um, the link to the Mentimeter. Um, Please let us quickly know whether you are familiar with Farah's D group. We are 39 participants here in the room. Please do that quickly. 
Um, CM team, can you? Yes, thank you. There's the Mentimeter link. Uh, please click on the link in the chat and then you can give your feedback. Five person, great. Let's go ahead, 39 person. We are 39 person in the room. Please give us your feedback. Ten. Good. And while we are collecting here your feedback, we might want to use this time also to uh, share some ideas, some responses uh, to the presentations that you heard today, in particular the last one from Irene about uh, the way ahead and your role in it. Uh, so please um, feel free uh, to comment. You can also uh, raise your hand and uh, switch on your microphone for a comment if you like. I see here now 15 person gave a feedback. We are 39 person here in the room. Please colleagues, just click on the link for the Mentimeter and let us know, are you familiar with FARAD groups? So far, they are more not familiar with FARAD groups. Um, uh, which means it's time that you should become familiar with it. So you find uh, therefore in the chat, the link to the Faraday groups. Uh, Benjamin already showed it in his slides. Um, we will later show this link again so that you can join the Faraday groups. Okay, it seems uh, the colleagues are not uh, giving any further answers. Please the next slide indeed. Maximiliano, thank you. Um, for those who are familiar with uh, D groups, how do you use the information received via FARA D groups? So please give us your feedback. We had uh, seven, if I'm not wrong, who uh, stated that they are familiar with D groups. So please click on the Mentimeter and uh, give us your feedback. <clears throat> this is a word cloud. Um, you used email. Which means you receive it via email and you will share it further via email with other uh, colleagues. You use the information via FARA groups. Mm -hmm. Please, some at least further five feedbacks, please. Seven of you in the room are familiar with FARA, with, uh, with D groups. So, email seems to play a role here. It's mentioned twice. You use the information for your decision making processes. Just write one word. Um, it's a word cloud. Um, you use the information uh, to publish requests via email. So you are sending requests via email into the group. Mm -hmm. You receive or share updated news in D groups. Mm -hmm. Some are using it for observation purposes. Email feed read. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I assume that those who are familiar shared already some ideas. Here we have eight person who contributed to this word cloud. Again, in the center, emails seem still to play a central role, which from my perspective, by the way, is indeed uh, one of the many pluses with D groups, uh, because uh, indeed for many actors that I know, 
still emails are uh, the main communication channel. We are slowly moving globally, I assume, towards using social network principles, but still emails are playing a central role. And this is what D groups is also referring to, which makes it such an excellent tool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. so much let me check something here please go ahead colleagues um we have this is our last mentimeter question good, good. colleagues thank you very much i do not see new inputs here um may i share uh my screen thank you so much for uh to the cm team um let me see here what can i go back to my slides which i hope that you can see them close here Windows. it's a bit comfortable for me here to manage this in Zoom, but now you should see my full screen. Um, indeed, looking back, uh, colleagues, uh, to all this uh, very impressive presentation, all the ideas that are uh, at place and activities that are uh, going on, um, we are suggesting to uh, have our last tea and coffee today. Um, Already now, we were quite fast um, through uh, the uh, exchanges here and through the presentations. Um, what, what, what are your main and spontaneous takeaways from today's discussion? Uh, it is always helpful. We, we, we heard something about uh, the knowledge management system today created by Leap for FNSSA, KeyOps, an, an artificial intelligence uh, based tool for uh, knowledge uh, exchange. Uh, we heard about the project database and um, the clustering process. Um, what is your spontaneous takeaway from that? We heard uh, about D groups from Benjamin and again, um, an, an overall uh, idea about this platform process and how important it is that you are uh, contributing to this process. So please, uh, colleagues, uh, feel free uh, to raise your hand. I can see here now in the list of participants now, when you raise your hands, would you like to share a last comment, a last uh, spontaneous takeaway uh, for you personally that you want to share uh, with the participants here today? If this is not the case, because there's silence in the room, even though that we are 41 person here, I do not see there a hand. Um, then I suggest um, let's close this fourth good morning uh, that we had uh, so far. Um, I read here in the chat that um, uh, we are also kindly asking you to interact with us uh, on Twitter and using the hashtag uh, GMSF2022 uh, and follow us please also on, on Twitter. You will find um, the, the link to uh, our Twitter accounts um, later. We would like to uh, thank you all who contributed uh, here to today's Good Morning Stakeholder uh, sessions, as well as to the former three Good Morning Stakeholder sessions. Uh, big thanks to all the speakers, all the facilitators, 
the technical and logistics support from Siambari Italy and the organizers. Uh, that was excellent. Um, we had the impression that these four good mornings so far were quite helpful in this core development process of the platform. Uh, we had several opportunities uh, to have an exchange. Uh, we hope very much that you are linked already uh, with this process. You can do this uh, A, via expressing your interest uh, to join the platform. We had this also uh, several times in the chat and uh, may I ask Siambari uh, to uh, post this again in the chat, this link here, where uh, the colleagues can express uh, their interest to join the platform process. But what you uh, can do furthermore uh, um, is to join Leap for FNSSA D groups, as um, Benjamin mentioned uh, several times, and Irene was again referring to it. This is indeed the entry point for you uh, to be in contact uh, with the network around the development of the platform. We are planning um, as the fifth Good Morning uh, session of the Good Morning Stakeholder Forum, a meeting which is um, reserved only for funders. So on the 15th of February, uh, we will uh, discuss uh, the future AU-EU funders collaboration um, in a closed session, but of course, you will be informed um, about the output uh, in agreement with the funders um, so that you are informed about um, the, the, the contributions from funders' side uh, to the development of the platform and uh, the consortium that is uh, about to be built. Uh, and in that sense, um, I thank you very much in the name of LEAP for FNSSA uh, for participating in the Good Morning Stakeholder Forum so far. Please stay in contact with us, uh, join uh, D groups, send us your expression of interest um, so that we are connected. Uh, check our website from time to time uh, with uh, some news that are posted there. You can follow us on Twitter and on Facebook so that we are connected and that we create the platform that we want. In that sense, thank you very much and see you Stefan. very soon. Stefan, hold on. Uh, we request for a family photo. <laughs> that's what Siam Barry calls it. Uh, yeah, that's and a normal thing that I forget to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank so you. that's one. But I also wanted, I mean, you we moved from the, um, when you're saying uh, takeouts, yeah, takeouts. I think it is important that there is some takeout that came out from my uh, group uh, when we met the private sector and uh, practitioners um, uh, group. And the issue of how we incorporate the informal sector uh, was resounding very hard because sometimes we forget about them. And then the issue of how we engage the youth. So that's something that I think would be a good take out because it comes from that discussion. But seeing that you've closed the meeting, I say thank you very much also for the opportunity to facilitate that group. But then just request everybody to put on their, uh, what are they called, their videos so that <laughs> CM can at least have a photo to in memory of today. Thank you very much. So Siam, you let us know when you're done so that we can stop smiling and say our goodbyes. Switch off your... Oh, we should not stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> your camera has smiled to, to have a good photo. So yes, for a good morning, we need a good photo indeed. <laughs> 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 Hello. <I don't> <laughs> good. Good. Okay. Bye bye. Hey, Thank you. Have a good Thank afternoon, you. colleagues. All the best. You, See you soon. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.